Hey guys, this is Michal from mdbootstrap.com and today we are going to learn about one of the most useful and most commonly used feature of the bootstrap, the flexbox. With flexbox, for example, we can easily center our elements vertically and horizontally. Have a look, just by adding a few classes to our layout, we can make them perfectly center horizontally and vertically. But it's only a beginning. Flexbox is a really powerful tool, which allows us to quickly manage the layout, alignment and sizing of grid columns, navigation, components and more with a full suite of responsive Flexbox utilities. I am using it in all my projects and it saved my life many, many times. In this tutorial, I am using MD Bootstrap, which is a free UI kit that greatly extends Bootstrap capabilities. I strongly recommend you to use it but if you prefer, you can still use a regular bootstrap. The Flexbox will work exactly the same. If you want to download MD Bootstrap, just go to mdbootstrap.com, click big red download button, once again, unzip the package, and open it in your favorite code editor. I am using Visual Studio Code. Now we can start to code. To start using Flexbox, go back to MD Bootstrap Docs and in the search box type Flexbox. Here the third item is Flexbox documentation and as you can see it's huge. It covers multiple examples that you can use in your projects. It seems a bit complicated but fortunately there is an easier way to learn about Flexbox. In MD Bootstrap in the top of this page you can see the build your button. Click on it and here you can see a very nice generator of the Flexbox. On the right side, we can see all available options in Bootstrap Flexbox. So we'll use this generator to learn about Flexbox and to use it in our project. Let's have a look at this example. Below the demo box, we have a generated code. Here we have a parent container and three elements inside. The first class in a parent container is H100, which is not strictly related to the Flexbox, but it's important to um, this example because without this we couldn't see some of the Flexbox effect. For example, we couldn't see a vertical alignment. If we turn off this class, now you can see the parent container uh, and its height is only that big as the item, items inside. So we cannot actually see the vertical alignment here. Depending on your layout, your parent container can have a different height. It doesn't have to always be 100%. You can, for example, hard code it or you can solve it in many different ways. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's use this class and use the container with full height. Now let's move on the Flexbox itself. Let me turn off all of these classes that we can play around with each of them and have a look at our example once again. The first thing we need to do is to enable Flexbox in our parent container. And we can do this by adding the Flex class to our parent container. Without this, the Flexbox we won't work. We can also change the behavior of the parent container by changing the Flex class with the inline Flex. Now, as you can see, looking at this gray area which represents the parent container, the width change. And when using deflex, the width of the parent container is always 100%. Uh, 
when changing into inline flex, the width of the parent container depends on the width of the items inside. Let's change it back to deflex and now we'll have a look at direction property. Direction property allows us to decide if our items should be displayed horizontally or vertically. So by default they are displayed horizontally. So if I change to flex row, it changes nothing. It's a default, so we don't even need to use this class. But if I change it to flex column, you can see that instead of displaying horizontally, they are displayed vertically. And we can also change the direction from uh, top to bottom to direction from the bottom to top. So we can add flex column reverse class and now the first item start at the bottom and then goes item 2 and item 3. If we change class to flex row, you can see the def default behavior, but if we use flex row reverse, the behavior is similar to uh, the previous one. That is, they start from right to left. Now let's change it back to default behavior, so it's none, and we'll move to justify content property. This is one of the most useful utility from Flexbox and it allows us to align the content on the x-axis, so to align them horizontally. If we change justify content property to justify content start it will change nothing because by default it starts always from left and it ends on the right side so uh, if you use um, left to right settings it will change nothing but for example if you come from arabic countries and you read content from right to left it matters because it will set your items from right to left and the right will be the side where your content will always start. Now if we change justify content to justify content and you will see it will move to the right side. If we use justify content center which is probably the most common used property you will see they are centered we can also change it to justify content between so the first item will be aligned to the left the last will be aligned to the right and the middle item will be center we can also use option like justify content around or justify content evenly. The next utility is align items and it let us align items on the Y axis. If we use align items start, it will align them from the top. If we change it to align items end, and you can guess it will align them to the bottom. This property works exactly the same way as justify content works, but instead of the x axis, it works on the y axis. So align item center, let us align them in the middle, align items baseline align item stretch and it's basically it about align items property. The next utility is align self and as you can see it affects only item 1. So the difference is that instead of applying the utility to the parent container we'll apply them to the specific item inside of the container. And if we change it to align item start, 
here we can see the class was added to the first item and I can see a small bug here because we are missing a space here but uh, it doesn't affect it doesn't affect um, the demosum I will continue but uh, keep in mind that sh here should be one additional space between BG primary and align self start all right so uh, this utility is very useful if you don't want to apply uh, flexbox to all the items in set but you want to choose a specific item and apply uh, specific flexbox utilities to this specific item so let's see what options do we have here align items and align at item center baseline and stretch the next option we have at our disposal is fill so if we check this checkbox you can see that the first item because uh, this option affects only item uh, first as well and the first item will stretch the full available width and the last option is auto margins and it also affects only item one so if we use me auto you can see it set a margins on the right side and if we use ms auto it will set a margin to the left now let's see the flexbox in action and let's use these utilities in the real project so open your mdb package and open it in your browser and you can remove the existing content here and now go back to the docs and type in the search box headers and here you can see a background image component so let's copy this code and here you can see we have a navbar with a very nice hero image uh, with a background here we have our content and as you can see we are already using flexbox here so as you remember we enable flexbox by using the flex classes and just justify content center to justify content uh, in the middle of available width if we remove this you can see it will move to the left and we also use align item center to align contents vertically if we remove this it will be moved to the top so if we want to play with flexbox we can just uh, generate the desired flexbox settings so for example let's use justify content between align items to the end let's stretch the first item and let's fill it and now we can copy this generated code and let's replace the flexbox in the component with the code we just generated in the generator after we save this here we can see our items actually all right here we need to add this extra space and actually 
it doesn't need to be this H3 elements. We can use whatever elements we like. For example, let's add some H1 heading. And let's add some button. And let's add another button with different color. And as you can see, all the elements behave accordingly to the settings we used in our Flexbox. In the composition like this, in most of cases we want to center the elements vertically and horizontally. So let's change this um, Flexbox settings to Justify Content Center, Align Item Center. Let's turn off this Align Self and Fill options and let's copy these classes and let's replace this with the classes we generated and here you can see that our items are centered vertically and horizontally. With these settings there is one problem because they are the items uh, are aligned in uh, the same line and for example if you would like to have mm, uh, the heading mm, uh, over the buttons and the buttons below we need to use a slightly different composition so we can wrap these items inside of the uh, parent item so let me just create a simple div and now if we place them inside you can see it works as expected so it works this way that all the flexbox settings are applied to this div and inside of this div there is no more flexbox so they are not the items are not aligned in the single line it's a very nice trick which allows us to create the desired composition let me just add text white to this heading to make it more visible and we can also add some subheading let's say h5 this is subheading and now it's perfectly fine and that's it for this tutorial i hope you found this video useful and now that you understand at least basics of flexbox and that you can use it successfully in your projects if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we publish useful videos every few days. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.